sorry it's taken me so long to get to this review, guys. I've just been spending a lot of time with family. I mean, as you know, a man who never spends time with family can never really call himself a man. Hey, what's up, bookworms and green boners? I swear I won't do that again. I am back today to talk some Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. This, of course, is Jade City, first released in 2017. Seems like it really picked up steam a little later after it won a lot of accolades, and a lot of accolades it did win. It won a what, World Fantasy and a World Award. In 2018, it was a finalist for the Nebula, the Locust, the Ignite, and the Dragon Award. Not too sure about those last two. I haven't really heard of those. But it's a book that is very well recognized, not only among the fantasy community, but along Miss Lee's peers as well. So I have constantly been asked to review this series, nonstop since it came out. In fact, I actually kind of made the joke at one point. In 2019, when it seemed like everyone was reviewing this, that I was going to be the last booktuber to do it. Well, here I am, a man of my word. I am here to finally do it in 2022, so better late than never. So guys, a lot of expectations have been placed upon this book. In fact, of how many people are telling me that they think I would enjoy it. So did it meet those expectations? We're going to talk about it, guys, but we're going to begin like usual by getting into what is the book about. Now, the Call family is one of two crime syndicates that control the island of Kikon. It's the only place in the world that produces rare magical jade, which grants those with the right training and heritage superhuman abilities. The Greenbone clans of honorable jade-wearing warriors once protected the island from foreign invasion. But nowadays, in a bustling post-war metropolis full of fast cars and foreign money, Greenbone families like the Calls are primarily involved in commerce, construction, and the everyday upkeep of the districts under their protection. But when the simmering tension between the Calls and their greatest rivals erupts into open violence on the streets, the outcome of this clan war will determine the fate of all Greenbones and the future of Kikon itself. And guys, all the way back to 2017, this is Jade City. Let's kick this off, guys, with what makes it good or bad. I gotta say, my favorite thing about this is it feels more like a crime novel than it does a fantasy novel. I will say that if you didn't have this listed under fantasy, this is never a book I would have placed under fantasy because, yes, this J does seem to give people some superhuman influence, but it's it's very, very small, at least in this first book here, to where it almost seems like Jade's like a, more of a precious resource than it is actually something that grants, you know, like superpowers or something like that. So that's something that might evolve over over time, but with this book, I really felt like the focus was more on like the Godfather or the Yakuza in Japan. It really did feel very much like something of that nature. Very much an organized crime book, much more than it is anything uh, pertaining to what we would call fantasy. I think a lot of people tell me, okay, what well, they would classify as urban fantasy. Besides Dresden Files, I've never read urban fantasy. So if this falls under that umbrella, I would understand that. But for me, that I, I love that this really did feel like a mafia book. It has like the mafia power stru structure. You know, you got you got the, the pillars, the horns, and the fists, which are very much like, you know, the boss, uh, the, the underboss, the consigliere, things like that. It has the same kind of structure as any type of mafia story would, just with some different names. And that's something I really, really did appreciate. Now, look, guys, I'm going to say right up front, I've watched The Godfather about 1,200 times. So not only am I going to quote that several times while covering this, I'm also going to make lots of comparisons to it. So I apologize for that in advance if you aren't a fan of The Godfather. Well, I am, and uh, these are good things to be comparing it to. Uh, so I, I love the soft magic system. Like I was kind of just uh, kind of alluding to there earlier is I feel like if you really just wanted to make this a book about a valuable resource, it would have worked that way as well. So again, I think that's something that's probably going to uh, uh, you know kind of grow as a series grows because so many people have talked about the magic in these books. And with this first book, very, very soft and almost extinct. So we'll see where it goes uh, going forward. But guys, one of the best things about this book, the characters. The characters are phenomenal. Me being a character first guy, I love it. In fact, I actually think some things with some of these characters are so good, I was sad to see them go so early. And that's something that usually with a book like this, I'm like, ah, I didn't have time to get to know the character, so no big deal with a, with a loss that early. But there's a big loss in this book that really did take me aback a little bit and be like, wow, okay, she's not playing around because she did spend some time developing this character and then taking that character away. That was really, really surprising to me, but it's really, really great. I gotta say, I mean, obviously the standout here 
is they're, they're called siblings here. Uh, Lan, Shay, Hilo, and uh, Anden. I love all four of these characters, and I think that they're all so nuanced in their own way, but they feel very familiar, and I think they feel very familiar because of my ties to the Godfather. Shay is very clearly Michael Corleone, where, you know, wants nothing to do with the family business. Hilo is very Sonny Corleone, where he's kind of a hothead. Not kind of a hothead. He's a hothead, and, you know, he's kind of a the thing of where people start to worry a little bit, man, I wonder, uh, I, I kind of worry about what the clan would be up to if he were in control, right? So that's uh, is, is one of those kind of things that makes me think of Sonny. And then you got uh, Andon is very much, I think, Tom and that he is the, you know, uh, adopted brother of this family. Now, some of these are right on the nose and some of them are, you know, me stretching a little bit to, to find a matching character in The Godfather. But I felt like I was doing that the whole time. Uh, you know, uh, Sin is very much like a, a Vito, you know, after he's uh, he's relinquished power uh, of the Corleone family. So uh, I'm, I feel like it would be weird to say I'm going to spoil stuff on The Godfather, but I mean, it's such an old movie at this point. It's on you. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. It's amazing. But uh, I, I think that uh, those influences are very much worn on Miss Lee's sleeve here, and I appreciate it. So when I make that comparison, it's a good thing, guys. If I say, oh, all you're doing is ripping off the Godfather, that would be a bad thing. This, I'm saying I could tell she was influenced by these things. It shows, and I'm liking it. I'm enjoying the power structure here. I'm enjoying these siblings. I'm enjoying everything about the creation of this world that she's taking the first half of this book to really build up. I hear a lot of people tell me, oh, you got to just stick with it. The first half's kind of slow. And I'm like, guys, I don't know if you haven't read very much fantasy. All book ones in a series are usually slow because they've got to establish everything first and she does that and she takes her time with it and I appreciate it because it gives me some context to why I should care about these characters something that a lot of modern fantasy does not do is make you care about the characters and establishing this world this power structure is something that is very very well done I think and it is a slow burn but it is something that I never felt like I was like okay let's get on with it I've got everything I love her giving the backstory to some of these things and why people are where they are at. It's great, great character work. But I gotta say, I love the emphasis that this book puts on family. Now, anytime you're dealing with like a mafia style story, family is gonna be a very big deal, both uh, you know, metaphorically and literally. And I think that that is very much the thing here. I mean, you got these call siblings uh, run by Lan, who is actually very much in the shadow of his grandfather, which was like this all time great leader. So you're talking about the very long shadow that this guy is trying to you know run this family business under and it's uh, it's it's tough it's tough you know always thinking about how am i going to meet up to those standards so it's kind of like if you're a, uh, think about joe hill you know think about him his dad stephen king so everything that he writes ever always going to be compared to stephen king kind of situation i would say here but on a much grander scale obviously in that you hold the lives of numerous people in your hands so it's a uh, it's, it's really really great uh, setup with how much emphasis is put on the importance of family. I think that's something that's very, very important. And I think uh, seeing this from the siblings POV is something that really helps get that across. You know, I, I, I like the way that she's able to bounce back and forth from these POVs. It isn't like a particular chapter is this character and the next chapter is this character. She will bounce back and forth between them. And I think she does it rather well for this being a debut novel. I got to say, I was really impressed with her writing style. It was very good. I never felt jarring. I never felt confused about who is this character? What are they doing? I mean, I even think she gave some uh, some good background to some characters that we don't know a lot about yet. Like I ate over at the, at the Mountain Peak. I want to know more about this character. The little bit that she gave me about that was very, very cool. Talking about how that person rose through the ranks to be the head of that house is amazing. So I love that she's spending that much time on even what many people are probably consider secondary characters. Now, again, guys, I've only read the first book. These are characters that could become bigger later, but at this point right now, uh, I really do appreciate the work that she's putting into all of these characters and not just the call siblings. Uh, I do feel like this is very much adult fantasy. I guess adult urban fantasy. The twists are very, very good. Like I said, not everyone's safe. You might get fooled. Now, I'm going to full disclosure here, and you might want to go ahead and start throwing tomatoes at me here. I might have assumed that this was not, I was not the target demographic for this because I'll be honest, guys, a lot of modern female fantasy is not aimed for me. It really is not. And that's okay. That's okay. That's perfectly okay. I don't think that's a bad thing to say. I mean, what do I have to go off of here? Like Lee Bardugo and things like that that I've tried, <laughs> you know? So I don't think that that's necessarily a, saying a bad thing that I made that mistake of thinking this wouldn't be for me. Guys, this is nothing like that. This is definitely not gender specific. I don't think that that's any problem. I don't think this is age specific. 
Uh, look, if you've read like super heavy, like if you've read like Malazan and you go to this, you're not going to be like, oh, this is on par with Malazan. I'm saying with like, it isn't super complex, but I feel like it's approachable for just about any age. Now, I wouldn't let, uh, you know, I wouldn't let my kids read it. Uh, I do definitely feel like it's a, a much later teen or early 20s kind of book because there is a lot of sex. There is a lot of violence. You know what? I'm going to talk about that. I say, well, let me, let me back up. Sex scenes are actually written really well. And uh, let's be honest here, guys. Uh, the ladies write the sex scenes better. Unless it is Jay Kristoff. Trey Kristoff <laughs> still kind of holds that title. But for me, in my experience, I've said one of the weaknesses of male fantasy authors is they try to write sex scenes and they are just cringe to the nth degree. Uh, the, the one that she has in this book really early kind of had me looking around my office like, is anybody watching me read this? So it's, uh, that's how you know it was pretty good. So she writes those very good. But yeah, the violence, uh, there is some bad language. It's not like, we're not talking like Joe Abercrombie, but she will drop some F-bombs here and there. There's a lot of a lot of GDs and a lot of shits and things like that. So uh, I, I would definitely say this is adult fantasy, uh, adult urban fantasy, I guess is what I would classify it as. But I love that no one is safe because you will go into the story thinking, okay, these are my characters. These are all safe. Uh, these over here seem like they're very important. These are all safe. Uh, these from this family seem like they're high up. They're all safe. Not the case, guys. If you know anything about organized crime, the body count's going to get pretty high. So, uh, yeah, sh no one is safe in this story. And uh, Miss Lee seems like she has no problems slicing up some of your favorite characters. And I am here for it. So, like I said, guys, if you love mafia stuff, uh, if you've watched The Godfather 1,200 times like me, I think you're going to enjoy what you find here. As for the not so good stuff. Now, this didn't necessarily bother me. These are some things that might get to you if you're a first time reader of it. Uh, the, the slow start, as some people put it, that stuff is tough for some people. If you aren't a hardcore fantasy reader, because I mean, like every fantasy series they get into, everyone in the book one, they're always like, oh, it has a slow start. Like I said, you got a lot to establish. And this world, she has a lot to establish. You know, she has a, uh, you know, make sure you understand the power structure. Make sure you understand which territories belong to who. Make sure you understand why Andon is where he's at. There's these kind of things that she has to do slowly. I never consider these a bad thing. But if you're wanting something that's super fast and super action heavy, might not be the book for you. Like The Godfather, this is a book that is about 90% dialogue. You think back to The Godfather movies, it is a lot of talking, 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 right? And then you have like your big shootout and then it's talking, talking, talking some more. Same thing. That's just kind of the way with mafia or underground uh, underground uh, crime, crime families, things like that. You're going to have mostly backroom dealings in politics. That's just kind of a thing that you're going to get in that kind of story. So if you're wanting just like fast paced action, this isn't it. I'll also give her a knock on the action. The action scenes are okay. They're pretty forgettable. Uh, it's, it's one of those things like literally I was reading like a big fight scene that happened about the midway point in the book and I was like not really necessarily looking at my watch but I was like did I leave the stove on? That kind of thing. Like it, it wasn't really grabbing me. I think that's something that might come in time once the magic is more developed in this series and again that's just an assumption on my behalf. This might be the only way that the action ever really gets. But as for a, a debut author, I feel like the action was like, eh, it was something that I would say, wouldn't say is like makes it really great. But again, the dialogue's good. And I think that's the most important part in a book like this. So if you don't go into this expecting like a Mistborn magic system, I think it'd be okay. But if you are wanting heavy fantasy magic, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be very, very disappointed. I say this is closer to the first law in magic and than it is, uh, you know, to Brandon Sanderson. So you're not going to get a crazy magic system at all. Me, I consider that a good thing. But, you know, I know a lot of modern fantasy readers, they depend on that magic system. Uh, I do feel like the ending is kind of abrupt. And at the same time, I also feel like you could have maybe used the scalpel just a little bit on this. Feel book, the book is a touch too long. I wouldn't say that there's anything I really necessarily think should have been cut. I feel like some things could have been sped up at some points, but I was never really bored reading the book. So I think that that's a good thing. But I, looking at the series and seeing how the books do get longer as the series goes along makes me wonder if she kind of loses her way a little bit. Now, I've heard nothing but great glowing things about the sequel book, so that may be something I look back on and laugh. But from where I'm sitting right now, I feel like, okay, that could something that can be a problem later on if, you know, if her editor doesn't reel her in a little bit. So that could be something that I think that... Uh, that I would, I, would, I would kind of put a knock against it. And also, I do feel like the ending is abrupt. Uh, you get your big, you know, third act moments, and then it kind of calms back down, and it has like, okay, this should be ending by now, and it keeps going a little bit. And then, then when it just ends, it's just like, it's kind of a weird place to end it on. But 
if you're like me and you're reading this series all back to back to back and you ain't got to wait a year plus between releases, that's perfectly fine because you can go into the same story. It's not really a big problem. But again, those are things I think that uh, some people might have some issues with. Let's get into why you should read it, guys. Now, if you enjoy organized crime, if you've watched The Godfather as many times as I have, you just love mafia stuff, you love Yakuza stuff, I think you're going to love this, guys. This is everything that I love about that genre. It's all here. It's all done really well. I love any time you can make the politics so good that something as simple as the, the head of two families sitting down and talking can end in a super high body count. The tension is just cranked up really, really high during those moments, and it's really well done. I am really, really excited about where the series is headed. It takes a little time to get used to all of the characters, all the little titles, like I say, you know, the, the horn, the fist, the fingers, all that stuff. It might take a little while for you to understand what's going on, but you'll get it rather quick. I, I do think so. And if you really want, guys, there's a, you can you can just Google uh, Jade City like ranking system, and it has a thing that shows you how the ranking system works. It really isn't tough, but if you need that visual cue, it is there. It's not hard to find. But uh, watch out when you Google anything, because uh, you know tell you everybody that dies. Uh, so, so I think stick with it. You're going to enjoy what you find here. Lots of great, great characters. If you're like me, you really love some character work. I think she's doing a great job. And I hope that's something she continues to do over the course of the series because I'm very excited to, uh, to visit these characters again in book number two here pretty, pretty soon. So uh, yeah, good time. You're going to want to read the next book right away. Final thoughts, guys. I kind of touched on it there for a minute. I did fear that this is one of those series that everyone loves and I have this thing a lot on this channel where I have a, people will recommend a series to me big time. Like for example, people have been recommending uh, Remembrance of Earth's Past, uh, the you know, three body problem, a ton. And then I started reading it and I didn't care for it. And people were like, hey, I didn't really think you'd like it. Then why did you recommend it to me? And they're like, oh, because I loved it. With this, I kind of feared the same thing. I feared that this was going to be something that you know viewers love and they knew it wasn't for me, but they wanted me to read it anyway because they want me to talk about it. That does happen. Not the case with this one. Uh, so I'll give my guy Jake Bishop credit. He did say that I was going to love this series. And so far, he is correct. So I'm excited to continue with this. Uh, I love, uh, if someone had kind of sold this to me before, is like it's the Godfather with a little bit of magic, I probably would have went ahead and picked it up a lot earlier than I did. That is not the way that it was sold to me. Because really, guys, before I started reading this, I really thought this was like feudal era Japan or something. I had no idea what this book was. So I'm glad I went into it blind. So it gave me a real surprise when at the beginning of the book, it's like, hey, they got telephones, they got TV, they got guns, what? You know, that really shocked me because I, it is filed under fantasy. So it uh, was really, really surprising to me. So I think I would have picked this up a lot earlier. It's perfect timing for me. because I was having a little bit of fantasy, traditional fantasy burnout. So it felt different enough. You know that I really thought it was really, really perfect timing for me to do that. So I really think uh, there's an event that happens at about the 40% mark in this book that really just cranks everything up to 11, and it doesn't really let go the rest of the way. So I'm excited to continue with this. Uh, like I said, I keep hearing that each book gets better and better. I plan to start Jade War next week, guys. I'm going on a vacation, and I'm going to be taking that book on the ship with me. It's going to be very, very exciting. Got a seven-day cruise, and I think I'm going to spend it with the call sibling. It's going to be a good, good time. I can't wait. So coverage on each book for this will kind of depend on how you guys do it. I was going to review this as a trilogy, but so many people wanted me to talk about just this first book to know if they should go ahead and pick it up. I think it's a resounding yes if you like the things that I talked about here. As far as spoilers and stuff, Jake and I have kind of mentioned about doing getting together and talking uh, full series spoilers when I'm done with it. So we'll readdress that when I get to the end of the series. So guys, that was Jade City. What did you think? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you there.